Hi, this is Tracy Braxton, and you know I got soul, honey. Okay, so your album Crash and Burn is coming yes. soon. This album has been a long time coming. I know you've waited, waited a long time for this one. Yes. What is it going to mean to you when this when this album releases? Oh wow. Um, it will mean to me when this album be released on October the 9th, no, October the 7th. This means so much to me because it's like I accomplished something. You know, sometimes I'm not a finisher, a finisher so you know, I really got this one. It, right. Yes, that orgasm is there, I did it, it's gone, yes! Right. So, <laughs> it, it's gonna feel real great. You know, finally having the product and having it out for my viewers and my fans to listen to. This solo project has been in the, in the works for years now, since you were with the Braxtons in the, in the late 80s, early 90s. So how did you never give up on your dream of putting out a solo album? Actually, I, I, I was kind of discouraged because um, me putting, trying to put out music, a lot of people would be like, you know, you, you're Tony's sister, can you sound like her? Can you do this? Can you do that? And I'm like, I'm Tracy Braxton. Right. I'm not Tony Braxton. Um, give me a chance. I have my own distinct sounds. And one day I was in the office, my manager Cliff Jones was there, and I was just singing a song, one of the producers there, um, David Lindsay was there. And he was playing this song and I just kept singing it and, you know, just singing it from my heart and, and things like that. And Cliff finally was like, Tracy! I was like, what What did I do? I didn't do anything on Twitter this time. I didn't get into a beef. <laughs> and he had me in the office. He was like, you are playing around. Stop playing. You need to be in that studio. Learn that song in two days and you come back. Right. And he, and it went from then. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. And you, I'm signed to E1. <laughs> yep. <laughs> And, and you chose Last Call as the single to lead this album. It's, it's doing well right now. What yes. made this the one you wanted to lead with? Um, I'm, you know, I'm going through a little difficult time with my husband on marriage boot camp. And during that time, you know, I, I forgave him for the long, long time ago that when we first got married, it was infidelity -ness. And, you know, I did it back to him because I was mad with him. But with, with the Last Call, I still have love and I still want that there and, and I want you to do right and and this is the last time this is the last time I, then I'm gonna have to give up on it but you know the dude do come back you know right. he comes back and <laughs> <It's nice. laughs> makes me happy and makes me want to kiss him in his mouth all the time so you know awesome. <laughs> talk about the rest of the album and, and what we can expect to hear there oh wow um, I'm doing a, a duet with Raheem Devon it's called Stay oh, wow. Sippin uh, Tank it, uh, wrote on the album and my brother wrote a song also and um, the song my brother wrote um, it was supposed to be for Tony and it's called Reasons and he gave this song to my sister a long time ago when my mom and dad went through their um, divorce and things like that so Tony never used the song and I was like hey I would like to use this song I love this song you know right and Mikey was like, okay, but you got to ask Tony, because I did give it to Tony, and I asked Tony about it, and she was like, yes. And actually, I was like, okay, yay, she passed the torch to me, because when Anita, back, when Anita Baker passed the torch to Tony, it was several songs from Tony's first album with Babyface. Anita Baker was supposed to have done it, and she passed the torch to Tony. It was like, hey, give it to the girl that's singing it. She sounds good. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> <Awesome>. <laughs> I was reading your bio, um, you were dubbed the wannabe on the show, yeah. you know, Braxton Family Value. So wh what type of a statement is it going to make when you put this great body of work out and all the people who doubted you can hear it and see what you can do? Oh, wow. The wannabe, I, I had to grab that and put it in my own perspective because me being a wannabe, I want to be successful. I want to be singing. I want to have my own salon. So, yeah, I was a good wannabe and I'm doing it. Right. That's awesome. <laughs> I made it a reality. <laughs> Can you talk about, besides the show, uh, Braxton Family Values and the album you know and your family, what are some of the other things you'd like to do? Anything else you dream about in the future? Um, me finishing hair school. Um, me going back to dancing classes. <laughs> That's, I need that. Oh my God. I, I miss it. I used to be a ballerina. I did tap, jazz, and, you know, all of that. But I really miss dance classes right. okay. yes it, it's a different kind of 
um, expression. Right. You know, you're expressing with your body and it flow and angles and <laughs> yeah. Awesome. In <And> lines. <laughs> <laughs> now, in terms of the show, I know you had left the industry for a while. You were kind of out of the spotlight, but how much mm -hmm. do you think the show um, kind of elevated you back into things and allowed you to achieve these dreams you're doing now? Do you think it would have been possible otherwise? Do you think you attribute most of it to, to the reality show? I have to say, me, you know, going, singing and, and me pressing on and following my dreams, that the reality, the reality show really helped a lot. Right. It, it helped a lot. It, it can uphold my my ability, my capabilities in, in, in singing and hearing the family sing and knowing that I can sing. Right. So I, I think it helped a lot of us a great deal you right. know Tony was already in the spotlight and then you have my baby sister Tamar and had her album out and, right. and everything like so a lot of positive things came out Trina she had a little single out yeah. and she's running bar chicks now and you know Tawana doing a sitcom with Bruce Bruce so it oh my god the sky <laughs> is the limit with us right. and I thank God for the reality show and I thank God for Tony saying, okay, I'll do this. Because right. if it wasn't for Tony, it wasn't a show. Right. Was there any ever, any hesitation about doing the show initially? At first it was, because I was like, I really don't want people to know my damn business. I have too much to say. And then everybody know my mouth is out of control at times. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when first season came and, you know, I was more laid back and then next season I started progressing. I was like, you know what, hey, I have a lot to say too. Right. Awesome. Now, Love to hear the history behind the artists. You know, talk about what you remember about signing with Arista back in the day with your sisters and, and being in that whole situation with the Braxton's late eighties. What do you remember oh my most? Goodness. <laughs> in eighty nine, my senior year, I'm not supposed to say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, we signed to Arista Records and it was a rewarding uh, it was so rewarding because we worked so hard. Right. with me and my sisters and my baby sister was only 10 at that and right. just singing with my sisters and having that harmony and, and being as one it it wasn't nothing else to say okay we will break up you, you understand what I'm saying right. no we are one we are as one we have the same heartbeat you know it's just like having herpes you're gonna see us Right. Constantly. So, <laughs> and then when Tony got the opportunity to sign with LaFace record label, uh, Tony and Tamar is 10 years apart, almost 11 years apart. So, Tony can't wear and do something like, okay, do me baby and expect Tamar to do it. Right. That's not going to happen. But, well, I'll tell you what happened. When Tony signed with La, La, uh, LaFace record label, she had her sisters singing background. So, it was like, we wasn't missing a beat. You know, she was just out for it. Right. You know, and for her to share her spotlight is the ultimate thing. You know, and I, I'm so proud of her because she didn't. She still don't have to share her spotlight, but she does. Right. And when we were signing to, um, it was first with LaFace record label, but my other sisters signed with Atlantic. I think it was Atlantic. Tamar, Trina, Tawana. Mm -hmm. I found that I was pregnant. I was four months pregnant. I didn't even know I was pregnant. Right. And um, when they told me, make a decision, and I made my decision, I, I kept my baby. That's awesome, that's powerful. Yeah, yeah. he's it. 18 and he's wonderful and he's an entrepreneur. He has his own business. I am so proud of him. I want to punch him in the face because he had a letter of acceptance with Stanford and he didn't go, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> I'm just so proud of him. Awesome. Now, final question for you. This comes from one of our readers. So, between the show and, and making music and your family, what do you do to relax and unwind in your downtime? Wow. Make music sing. Okay. I make music sing. I uh, work out. That's relaxing. And um, like I said, go back to dancing classes. I'm quite sure that it will make me more lean and you know, make me feel a little bit more better. I feel good because, you know, I, it was a milestone for me to lose the weight that I lost. You know, I was a fluffy girl. I, I can say I was 230 pounds. I was 230 pounds. And I feel wonderful. I feel great. I'm not even on any medication. 
Yes, I'm great. I feel wonderful. That's awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. So that's all we have for you. Anything you'd okay. like to add? I would like to add thank you guys so much for supporting me and being my backbone when I felt as though I did not want to do it and I did not want to press on and, and was feeling <sighs> having a pity party. Thank you for continuing to say, you know what, Tracy, stop that. Mm -mm, that's not what you're about. And helping me get up, brush myself off, and keep going. I owe it to my fans. Thank you all so much.